The first weekend of the NCAA tournament is done, and what a weekend it was. We saw upsets, we saw tight games, we saw overtime. Almost every single game in the first two rounds was interesting and worth watching. But one narrative stuck out among everything else, and that is the Pac-12. And as the Pac-12 fan that everyone knows and very few people love, I think that I will take it upon myself to talk about why everyone got it so wrong coming into the NCAA tournament. Let's discuss. So first, some backstory. Me, myself, I am a lifelong UCLA fan. I grew up a UCLA fan. When I was born, my parents wrapped me in a UCLA blanket. So I have been a fan my entire life and I, by extension, am also a Pac-12 fan, of course. Um, and when it comes to the Pac-12, I think everyone knows that the Pac-12 tends to be pretty disrespected when it comes to major conferences. You get the Pac-12 not being rated very high when it comes to preseason rankings. And, and I'm talking just about basketball, but a lot of this also applies to football. Uh, you get a lot of people that talk about the Pac-12 as being overrated. You get a lot of people that that remember specific times when the Pac-12 did fail. I mean, there was a few years ago where the Pac-12 didn't win a single game in the tournament. You get people bringing that up all the time. Um, and you get even some people that were going so far as to question whether or not the Pac-12 was even a major conference anymore. I mean, that was a talking point at the, be at the beginning of the season. So coming into the NCAA tournament, the Pac-12 was looked at as not, e not even close to the level of the Big Ten or the ACC, not on the level of the Big 12 or the SEC, and probably by a lot of the media, not even on the level of the Big East. I mean, a lot of media probably consider the Pac-12 the sixth best conference uh, in the NCAA tournament. And I had, I took a lot of exception to that. And, I, and a lot of people who are fans of Pac-12 teams did because here's the thing. The, there is a reason that the media, and, and I'm talking about the media and the committee by extension, there's a reason why there is such a bias against the Pac-12. You see, the media is almost entirely based on the East Coast. It's very heavily based in New York. The Pac-12, of course, every, every school in the Pac-12 besides CU and Utah are on West Coast time, which is three hours behind the East Coast. So when Pac-12 games tip off at 7 p.m. or even 6 p.m., you're talking about 10 p.m. over on the East Coast. A lot of these people in the media, they're not watching. They go to sleep I and mean, they literally do not watch the Pac-12. And you can tell. I mean, watch these studio shows where these people in the media are forced to talk about the Pac-12. They'll go on about Big Ten teams like they've been watching them all year. And then you see them talk about the Pac-12 and it's like they have no idea who these teams are. And so coming in, you had the entire media that was just that was just pretending like the Pac-12 basically didn't exist. I mean, take Oregon State, for example, the team that won the Pac-12 tournament. The entire media were basically saying, well, you know, Oregon State, they had this great run in the Pac-12 tournament. But at the end of the day, they're basically they're just lucky to be here. And you know what? They're, they're going to get they're going to get manhandled by Tennessee anyway. So, you know, good, good for Oregon State for making it this far. Compare that to Georgetown, the, the team who also who won the Big East championship, just like Oregon State. Both teams had a poor regular season. Both teams finished under 500. Both teams got really hot in their conference tournaments. Both teams pulled some upsets. Both teams won their conference tournaments. Both teams were seeded 12th. Oregon State, they were acting like they were lucky to be there. Georgetown, the entire media basically acted as though they were the favorite over the five seed CU, also from the Pac-12. And that's just an example. You can go to UCLA being thought of as an afterthought against Michigan State. You can talk about USC, who the entire media doesn't even realize that Evan Mobley, maybe the most talented player in the country right now, is on that team. Or you can go to Oregon, who basically the entire media doesn't know. When they saw Chris Duarte uh, in Oregon's first game against Iowa, they basically acted like they, they were like, where did this guy come from? As if they had never seen him before. Take all of that 
and then fast forward through the first weekend. The Pac-12 finishes 9-1. and one. They send four teams to the Sweet 16, including 12-seed Oregon State. Remember that team that was supposed to get whitewashed by Tennessee? They, saw, they just saw USC beat one of the most storied programs in the country in the University of Kansas by 34 points. It's Kansas' worst loss in the history of the tournament, and it's not even close. You saw Oregon beat down the number two seed, Iowa, 95-80. to 80. That game wasn't close. You you saw UCLA beat up on BYU and then mash Abilene Christian. This is the heart of it right here. The Pac-12 was an afterthought for so many people. The Big Ten was the con- it was the best conference in in the country. I mean, there was no question. The Big Ten. Look at how many great teams came from the Big Ten. We were told. The entire media narrative was that the Big Ten is the best conference in, in, in the country. The Big Ten got nine bids, and one of them is making the Sweet 16. The Pac-12 got five bids, and four of them are making the Sweet 16. And every single one of them made the second round, and UCLA had to play out of the first four. So UCLA had to win three games in order to get to the Sweet 16. Now, the reason why I felt it was important to make a video like this is because... It's important for people to realize that the national media, there is a game here. There there is a reason why the national media is so wrong and why they're they're wrong so consistently. Take, let me, let's do a little thought experiment here. Look at the preseason rankings in college basketball. Look through the list and this is what you see. You see Iowa, Big Ten team, Wisconsin, Big Ten team, Illinois, Big Ten team. That's all, they're all in the top 10. Michigan State in the top 15. They're, they're at number 13, Big Ten team. And you got to go all the way down to Arizona State, ranked number 18. That's the first Pac-12 team on the list. So the committee from the beginning is basically saying the, the Big Ten is going to be the best conference. They have three teams ranked in the top 10. No other conference has more than two. The the Big Ten is already the conference to watch. They're already telling you that. And they're already telling you the Pac-12, they, they can't compete. Even the best team in the Pac-12, they can't compete, right? That's what the media is telling you. Now, think about as the season goes on, especially in this season where there was very, very few non-conference games. As the season goes on, what would the media want you to continue believing? They would want you to continue believing that they were right that the Big Ten is the best conference in the country. Why would they want you to believe that? Well, simply because if you believe the media is wrong, then they stop making money. You stop watching, they stop making money. It's that simple. So you have to believe that you are getting analysis from the media that is accurate. So of course, they're going to continue. It's it's entirely based around confirmation bias. So they can't acknowledge that they were wrong about the Pac-12 the entire time because that would mean that they acknowledged that they were wrong. And if they were wrong, then then why would we ever believe that they'd be right? And in the age of social media, where you can send out 100 tweets in an hour, then the only thing that matters is that in the moment you believe that the media is correct. And anything that that, that goes to the contrary, you'll forget about easily. So maybe you do see a score from the Pac-12. Maybe you do see a Pac-12 team that beats a Big Ten team in non-con, which did happen. Well, that doesn't really matter because you'll forget about that very soon. So what it becomes is a season-long narrative and the media needs you to believe that they were right for the entire season. So the media is entirely fueled by confirmation bias. And then when you go to the committee, the committee is fueled by the media because the committee looks at rankings from the AP, they look at the USA Today, they look at all of that. So the media is fueled by that. So then the media confirms, or the committee confirms what the media had already been asserting, and then that feeds into the the media the next season that just confirms itself even more. So you see that there's just this constant circle, there's constant cycle of confirmation bias from the media and into the committee. So there's no room to break in if you are the Pac-12. Well, now we get a situation where the Pac-12 gets to show itself against all of these other conferences. And look what happens. It turns out the media was completely wrong. Now let's do a thought experiment. Replace all of these Big Ten teams that you see ranked in the preseason top 10. Replace Iowa, replace Wisconsin, replace Illinois, replace Michigan State. Replace all of these teams 
with Pac-12 teams. Let's say, let's say UCLA was preseason number five. Let's say USC was preseason number seven. Let's say Oregon was preseason number eight. Now, let's go into the Pac-12 season and you get Oregon State beating UCLA. And then you get CU beating USC and UCLA. And then you get USC beating Oregon. And then you get Oregon beating Arizona State. Once you get all of these things, what happens in the Big Ten when that happens? Right? I mean, think about Ohio State was preseason number 23. How did they break in? They beat Illinois and Michigan. So when the media looks at Ohio State, they say, wow, we must have really underrated them because they beat all of these ranked teams. But remember, those teams were only ranked so high because the media said so. So they're saying, wow, we under, Ohio State was really underrated. We got to move them up. And so Ohio State goes from preseason number 23. They get wins over other teams in the Big Ten. They go to preseason number seven. In the Pac-12, where you get, I mean, let, let, let's take a big upset from early on in the season. Let's, let's take um, Colorado beating Oregon early in the season, early in January. I think that was Oregon's fourth conference game or something like that. Yeah, fourth conference game. What the media sees when they see that, because Oregon, because Oregon in the preseason was ranked number 20, so they weren't exactly ranked very highly to begin with, and they started off their season with a loss to Missouri, so that just dropped them right out of the rankings just like that. So now they lose to CU. If Oregon had been ranked preseason number 8, they lose to Missouri, they probably drop down there in pre their number 13, let's say. CU beats them. And you're thinking, wow, CU, we must have underrated CU. I mean, they weren't even ranked to begin the season, but they just beat Oregon. Oregon's a quality team. Instead, Oregon's ranked preseason number 20. They lose to Missouri, who was unranked in the preseason. Oregon drops out of the rankings, and then CU beats them. So what do you think about Oregon? They must not have been that good. CU beat them. They must not be that good. We didn't think CU was that good. So Oregon must not be that good either. You see how just the number that you attach to the team at the beginning of the season changes entirely how we think about that team. I Illinois, when they suffer losses, remember, Illinois finished 24-7. and seven. Illinois had seven losses and finished the season ranked number two. Let's talk about who actually beat Illinois. Who did they lose to? They lost to Michigan State. Remember, Michigan State was ranked in the preseason, so the media still wants to confirm that they were right about Michigan State this whole time. Illinois loses to Rutgers. Well, the, the reaction is Rutgers must be a lot better than we gave them credit for. Remember, that's not how it works in the Pac-12, but that's how it works here. Illinois loses to Baylor. Baylor was preseason number two. So obviously, that's a great loss because Illinois lost to Baylor and we think Baylor's really good. You, you see how just that number makes all the difference when it comes to talking about these teams. So when you get to the tournament and you get all of these conferences that now actually get to play each other, what happens? It turns out that the top five teams in the Pac-12, they can compete with any conference in the country. They're doing it. I mean, every single one of these teams has beaten a high-quality opponent from major conferences, from mid-majors. You, you beat, you have Oregon trouncing Iowa, and Iowa has the presumptive player of the year in Luca Garza. The whole point is, when you actually get to see it in action, it turns out that the Pac-12 was underrated the whole time. What if the Pac-12 had been a nine-bid league like the Big Ten? What would have happened then? Don't you think that that would change the entire perception going forward of the Pac-12? What if the Pac-12 had been a nine-bid league and six of them had made the Sweet 16? Wouldn't that change the entire perception of the Pac-12 going forward? And that's exactly my point. The reason the Pac-12 is not a nine-bid bid league is not because the Pac-12 is any worse than the Big Ten. In fact, as we're seeing right now, it's much better than the Big Ten. The reason the Pac-12 is a five-bid league, would have been a four-bid league had it not been for Oregon State getting hot, and not a nine-bid bid league, is simply because the media at the beginning of the season decided that they didn't like the Pac-12. That's the only reason. I'm sorry, I, I hate to be on my soapbox here, but it does feel like those of us who are fans of the Pac-12 have been vindicated because we, for so long, have been feeling like the Pac-12 gets punished because there is so much parity in the Pac-12. There, there is not any given year that team that everyone beats by, by 1,100 points 
in the Big Ten, in the SEC, those teams do exist. You get teams that just are not on the level, and the Pac-12 has been punished by making sure that there is parity in its league. I mean, you look at Washington finished second to last in the conference this year. They won the conference two years ago. UCLA won the conference last year and now is going to Sweet 16 this year, and UCLA finished dead last or second to last in the conference three years ago. There is so much parity in the Pac-12 that it's constantly changing. And the Pac-12, rather than get rewarded for that, actually get punished for it. And now we're seeing exactly how good the Pac-12 is this year. And consistently, the Pac-12 is pretty good. Does it have its down years? Of course. But I remember a time when the Pac-12, what was then the Pac-10 in 2007, 2008, sent seven or eight teams to the tournament of its 10. So it didn't always, it wasn't always this way. So this is why I bring it up. Here's the solution. Get rid of the preseason rankings. Don't do it. Because they completely mess with the way that we look at college sports going forward. The, specifically college basketball. They totally mess up the way that we look at it. Because everything that we do from here on is a reflection on those preseason rankings. It's completely tainted by those preseason rankings. When you are preseason number three, by definition, you have to do a lot. You have to lose a lot to fall out of those rankings. If you're preseason number, say, 22, like UCLA, then you lose your first game to San Diego State, a team that ended up making the tournament, and you drop out of the rankings, never to return. But if UCLA had been ranked preseason number four, they'd still be in the rankings after losing to San Diego State. Get rid of the preseason rankings. It does nothing but hurt the teams that the media doesn't want to care about. So to me, preseason rankings should only be done after non-con has concluded. After non-con play is done, you can release your rankings. And then we can look at the conference season and that's how we can decide how good some of these teams are, how good some of these conferences are. Allow these teams to make an impression on you before you decide how good you think they are. And maybe if that were to happen, we, would end up, we wouldn't end up with a situation where the Big Ten, who's been lauded all year by the media, gets one team in the Sweet 16, and the Pac-12, who's been disrespected all year by the media, gets four in the Sweet 16. But you know what? If you disagree, let me know. Let's uh, let me hear in the comments down below. Let's have a conversation. Of course, subscribe here. Go check out GA Wrestling. Thank you so much for listening with us. We appreciate you.